that's kind of like the the mentality that that we are putting. But you know, it's it's been changing. I think in the la- in the in the last ten years, if you see Alcaraz now, like you know, you can't even play with a guy. You know, in three balls, he's gonna he's, he's winning the point already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm from New York, right? And growing up in New York, you know, everybody, really the U.S., you hear, you know, oh, like, where are you training? Oh, I'm going to Spain this summer. Like, there's this, like, there's this, there's this fascination, kind of an obsession when it comes to, like, tennis players, definitely in the U.S., but pretty much all over the world. Like, we have a buddy of ours who's played on our college team, and he's, he, you know, when he was talking to us about, you know, trying to go pro, he, the first, we were like, all right, so what's your plan? He's like, well, I'm going to Spain, and then we'll figure it out. So, the, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot that gets talked about when it comes to the Spanish training and 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 the Spanish method to train tennis players. Um, could you go into a little bit more depth for the people that have heard about it but don't really know like what sets Spanish training apart from every from everybody else? I think I think it all started maybe like from the 80s and 90s. We started to have a lot of success in in, in Spain with tennis. We had a lot of players that started to do very well. And then people could see that you know those players they were not always the most like gifted ones you know so so you they were not like born with like a crazy like ability but maybe with a lot of work and you know with the right ways of training they had amazing results so that kind of gives you like more options for a lot of people to identify yourself with with those players and be like wow you know like i think that they train really hard there they move really well and they're very tough to beat so i think that i can you know go there maybe get something out from from the way they train and also you know we have a good weather we have clay courts we have hard courts we we have a lot of tournaments to play like you know uh in new york if you go to if you play in la you have to take a flight for four hours like we don't have that kind of distance right so we have a lot of stuff that we can just play around close by close to home a lot of tournaments and it became like a hub so so you know it's it's just one thing after the other like a domino effect and then it becomes more of a of a you know of a of a thing but i think this it's just hard work i think hard work and a lot of them they focus a lot on like on like legs on the way you move and and mm-hmm. not making a lot of mistakes so i think that's why if you go to see like a tournament in spain you'll see a lot of players with not big weapons but like very solid and and, and tough 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 to beat so that's kind of like a way that you if, you, if you go to a junior tournament in Spain, you're going to see that. And if you go to a junior tournament in the U.S., you're going to see like, you know, guys serving 230 kilometers per hour, serving volley and stuff like that. If, if, if a young player does that here, they're going to tell him that he's crazy. You know, he's going to like, tell him like, what are you doing? You know, yeah. it's just another way of seeing tennis, I guess. Do you think that that's a positive? Because like, uh, I think about your game. I mean, you got major weapons. Your forehand's a weapon. You have your serve's a weapon. I mean, it's not a you know John Isner. Uh, I mean, it might as well be, but <laughs> but it's not. Uh, you know, it's not a. It's not like a mat. It's not like you know a Pelka or something like that. But you got a massive serve, and you also have um, massive forehand. What I, what I think so, is that when you have when you have that pool of players trying to play, of course, there's gonna be some guys that have some weapons because there's so many people trying to play tennis in Spain. So. Of course, mm. some guys are gonna have more weapons than others, but but I just think that maybe they em- emphasize much on 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 some things and they don't cover the whole game. I think like maybe in other countries like France or they maybe teach a bit more an all around game, and in Spain is more of just like a more defensive way of 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 playing and and not always being the one dictating and and that's kind of like the the mentality that that we are putting, but. You know, it's it's been changing. I think in the la- in the na- in the last ten years, if you see Alcaraz now, like you know, you can't even play with a guy. You know, in three balls, he's gonna he's, he's winning the point already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I bad. I heard I heard if you slice a backhand on a on a Spanish on a Spanish court, they deport you back to uh, wherever you came from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, no, it's there are definitely changes. I feel like. I feel like, especially with, like you mentioned Alcaraz, but a lot of these like Spanish guys, like the younger guys. I mean, the 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 how much more aggressive they are compared to like maybe previous generations is a huge difference. But I feel like Alcaraz kind of reminds me of Nadal as well, because Nadal is like grinder, but but also puts it away, you know? It's, so it's, I feel like it's nice to see that it's, it's almost as if their defensive game is still as strong because there's the foundation is there, but then they also have these weapons where they're finishing the point. So it's like, how do you beat a guy like that? Because you can't, you can't you can't beat him, you know, by being aggressive because he defends it, and then he also beats you by being, you know. So it's like a it's a it's a lose lose yeah. for anybody. That's why you, you know? retire. If you see exactly. a Spanish name in a draw, you just retire. 
<laughs> that's seven. So no, I think Alcaraz is I think Alcaraz is is more aggressive than Rafa because like yeah. he just tries to 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 like dominate you right away. I think Rafa likes to first wait a little bit and then you know he tries one time, mm-hmm. then wait a little bit, then he tries another time. I feel Alcaraz is like the point starts and he goes like pam 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 and he's just gonna try to to you know keep the points very short. Mm-hmm. You know he tries to do that. Sometimes you he can't, but I think Rafa likes to you know rally longer. Mm-hmm. Even though he's aggressive, but I think he, this guy, I think he's more aggressive. He he's a beast, man. Yeah. 